Praise the Lord, everybody. We, have, we certainly thank, praise God for his grace and his mercy, his love that he has shown toward us and how he has blessed us to continue unto this day. And right now we certainly uh, give thanks and honor unto the Lord for his greatness. And we want to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, remembering men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Uh, remember uh, those that are in prison, those that are in the hospitals, those that are in the nursing homes, and, and uh, those that are sick and shut in in all areas of life. Remember our mothers and our fathers, remember our children, uh, yes. remember those that I even walking in the same right way. Remember our leaders, that the Lord will bless. And just remember our heads of state, those in powers and authority, those that uh, are in leadership positions, both spiritual and natural. Remember the president, that the Lord will bless him as well and, and his cabinet and those that are under his authority. Are there any other prayer requests? All right, there'll be none other prayer requests. Thank you, Lord. Let every heart pray. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you and praise you for your greatness and your mercy, your love and your kindness. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every request that's been made known to you. Remember men and women and children everywhere. Lord, continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. Bless our hearts and our minds and our spirit, our soul and our bodies. Bless our Bible study on tonight. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. As David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And as the scriptures proclaim, we should enter in his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. So as we are looking at our Bible study on today, um, the Lord has led us uh, back over to the book of Hebrews uh, chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. In this particular chapter, Paul, I liken it to the uh, book of Proverbs. And what I mean by that is when you read the book of Proverbs, it gives you a lot of wise sayings. It gives you a lot of wise things to think on and to meditate on so that we ought to rehearse it in our minds that we might receive it. And Proverbs does that. It gives you a list, just a, a list of, of wise sayings, wise things that saints should do and know and understand. It puts particular thoughts, thoughts into your mind. And that's what uh, Paul is doing here, Hebrews chapter 13. He's given us thoughts, uh, not random thoughts, but thoughts that we ought to think on. And as he's concluding this great epistle. So as we begin to look at it, I want to look at a few verses here. As, as we begin to look and to see. Uh, the first one, Hebrews 13 and 1. He says, let brotherly love continue. Uh, he says, let brotherly love continue. So here he's really assuming that brotherly love is already in their midst. So he's saying, allow it to continue because love, it, it conquers things. It, it helps with our walk with God. It helps us to deal with each other. And it literally is a commandment from Jesus. If we were to uh, hold that and go over to uh, St. John chapter 13, in verse 34. 
If you have it, say amen. St. John 13, verse 34. Amen. Jesus is saying, because it's, it's, it's in your Bible as read, if you have the King James Version. He's saying, a new commandment I give unto you. It's a commandment. That ye love one another. Paul is saying, let brotherly love continue. Jesus is saying, love one another. And then he gives you a qualifier. A qualifier. He says, love one another as I have loved you. He's, he's the plumb line. He's the, he's the example. And he says, that ye may also love one another. So he's putting emphasis on his statement. Love one another as I have loved you, so you love one another. And Jesus, he paid the ultimate sacrifice for us, didn't he? Yes, he did. So we ought to sacrifice one for another. Now, Paul is literally talking about church membership. He's talking about people, uh, the saints, that we ought to love one another. Certainly we ought to love the world. <laughs> Amen? But, but he's really specifically talking about the saints loving one another. Why? Because we have close contact with one another. Uh, like have you would be in a family. Uh, in your family, the people that you live with, you have close contact with them. And, and you have to love them, if you allow me to say it this way, if you catch what I'm saying. Love them more than you would love, have to love a stranger because of your dealings with the individual, your intimacy with the individual, your contact with the individual. Uh, people you have contact with on a regular basis have uh, more opportunity to offend you, to, to, to do things that you don't like. Uh, there's a lot of things that you have to overlook. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and that's what Jesus is saying. Notice what he's saying, a new commandment uh, I give unto you. So this is a, a commandment. It's not a suggestion. Uh, he says that ye love one another. Love one another. Uh, don't, don't just like one another. <laughs> love one another. Uh, as, and, and the example is, as I have loved you. Uh, as, as Christ has loved us, we ought to love one another. He looked beyond all of our faults and he saw our need. We have to look beyond all the saints' faults and see their need. Amen? We have to look beyond uh, 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 issues and problems and conditions and situations to love them, to help them. The love of Christ is a salvational type of love. Notice what he said. That, uh, and then he puts more emphasis on it that ye also love one another. So, so he's, 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 he's compounding it by reiterating that we ought to love one another. Uh, so Hebrews 13 and 1, let's go back over there. Hallelujah. He says, love one another. Let, let allow brotherly love to continue. And, that, and that's why I said that he's talking to the saints because he uses the word brotherly, brotherly love, fellowship with one another, brothers and sisters, allow that love to continue. Uh, verse uh, 13 and two, he says, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby ye have entertained angels unaware. So now he's talking about here hospitality, hospitality. Uh, uh, be hospitable to other people. Entertain uh, strangers. When you're entertaining them, watch how you do, how you treat them. Be hospitable. The saints of God ought to show hospitality. Huh? We ought to be uh, uh, open and friendly, kind. Considerate, uh, not 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 mean and grumpy, <laughs> but considerate, open to conversation, uh, 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 sensitive 
to the needs of others. So he says, be, be not forgetful to uh, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels uh, unaware. There, there are angels around them, uh, and 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 they they come to see what type of hospitality we had. A, uh, Abraham, he entertained an angel. Uh, he brought him into his house, cooked him a meal, and then before the angel left, told him that God uh, uh, is going to bless you with that son. And then uh, uh, Sarah was there listening. Here, uh, I won't say she was. Uh, well, she was listening, <laughs> and 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 she laughed. Uh, and the angel asked her, "Why did you laugh, Sarah?" Uh, and Sarah said, "I didn't laugh." She said, "You did." <laughs> Thank you a lot. He entertained angels. Uh, the angels came and knocked on his door uh, uh, to deliver him out. Uh, and he fed them. And even uh, when, when those that are in Sodom and Gomorrah wanted to get him, uh, 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 get, 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 get those that are in his house, he offered them his, their daughters. His daughters. So you can have them. They're virgins. They were married. So the, the sons, they weren't even uh, into a relationship with, with the daughters. You follow? So, so, so notice what Lot did. Lot offered up his own children to protect the strangers or the angels. You follow? Uh, so he was showing hospitality. Uh, Abraham was showing hospitality. When he met with those angels, he, he cooked them a meal, invited them into his tent. Uh, thank you, Lord. So, so uh, the saints of God, we in Hebrews chapter number 13, verse 2, the saints of God ought to show hospitality. Uh, so show, show, be extra in your hospitality because in that you can win souls. You can win souls to Christ uh, in that by you entertaining people that you don't even know about, you may run across them at another time and they could be in a position to really help you. Uh, the kindness that you show to others uh, will, will reciprocate, can come back to you. Amen? Hallelujah. And, but, the, but the real goal is uh, showing hospitality is to win souls. Uh, he that winneth souls is wise. He that would have friends must show themselves what? Friendly. Friendly. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, uh, uh, verse thir uh, 3, uh, Hebrews 3, 13 and 3, he says, Remember them that are in bonds, as bound with them and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Now, remember, earlier I said he's talking about the saints. Uh, so he's going back and forth talking about strangers and he's talking now, he's going back to talking about saints. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> uh, it's not funny, but he says, remember them that are in bonds. Those that are in bonds, he's literally talking about, remember those that are in jail. Huh? Jail. Sometimes we forget about folks in jail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know I do. Sometimes I forget. You know, but he said, don't forget about those, the saints that are in jail. Some saints get locked up. <laughs> Some saints get delivered in jail. Huh? Huh? God uses everything to his glory huh? for his purpose. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so he says, he says, remember those that are in bonds. He's literally <laughs> talking about, remember those that, that, that are in jail, that are in prison, that are incarcerated. Uh, remember those. And even Jesus, he talked about those. Uh, uh, when have you visited me? When, when I visited you when you were in prison, uh, when you were locked up. So he says, remember those that are in bonds. Uh, uh, 
as being bound with them. Uh, so he's literally saying, have empathy on them as though you yourself could be in their shoes. Uh, uh, be grateful that you're not, as the song says, but uh, 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 you could be in their shoes. Uh, uh, so, so remember them in such a way that, that, that you, have, you can empathize, not just have sympathy on them, but you can empathize. You feel what they feel. Just like Christ, he can be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Amen? He's saying, have, have, have mercy upon them and, and, and feel what they're feeling. So notice what he says. Uh, uh, and, that, and that word also equates to what we call, what Christ calls also compassion. Uh, compassion. Have compassion one to another. And that word compassion means you empathize with them. And not only that, you want to do something to alleviate their pain, their suffering. Amen? When Jesus had compassion upon the multitude, he did what? He fed them. Amen? All right? So uh, can, can my reader read uh, uh, 13 and 3? Remember them that are in bonds uh -huh. as bound with them. As you are bound with them like you're in there with them. And them would suffer adversity. Now, now he's talking about a different scenario. He says, also remember those that are suffering adversity. Talking about here your brothers and sisters. Your brothers, you got brothers and sisters that are in the church that, that suffer adversity. That have conditions, that have problems, that have issues. Uh, and, and sometimes the Lord reveals their, these issues to us with, concerning our brother and our sister. And, and, and we should help them. Uh, we should encourage them. We should do what we need to do to keep them, uh, 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 how can I say it? To keep them alive. I was going to say keep them moving, but keep them alive, you know, connected to the body. Amen? Uh, compassion upon individuals goes a long way. Amen? Amen? Uh, because the devil is doing the opposite. He's literally beating uh, the saints down. Amen? Talking about us all kind of ways. Uh, telling us we're no good. So a kind word goes a long way. Uh, my brother? That's what the scripture says that the enemy accuses the brother. <laughs> and uh, in the scripture it also says that have compassion on them that are out of the way. Yes! Yes. Yes, absolutely. And that devil, he does accuse us. Amen. Tell us we no good. Uh, we stink. You know what I mean? All kind of things. All kind of things. You tell you. Uh, go ahead. I was talking to an individual today, and they were, you know, in the dumps. You know, right. Listening to what the enemy was telling them. Feeling like they had no hope. No hope. You know, they felt like, you know, no purpose in life. Yes. I, says, uh, I say the devil is a liar. He's a liar. Mm -hmm. Then the father of them. Yes. And, and um, how can I say this? Um, you know, the Lord himself can speak to an individual, but sometimes people want to hear a human voice as well. You know what I'm saying? It works together. Uh, and, and how the Lord works, we all know this, is that he'll speak to an individual, he'll send you to confirm it. <laughs> and that encourages the individual even the more. Uh, go ahead. And as they have been encouraged, it also gives them the tendency to keep reaching. Yeah. You know, they have to Yeah. for more of what they need. Yeah. Now, that's the goal. Amen. My head start tingling. Uh, uh, we got to keep reaching. Amen. And 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 sometimes uh, uh, life has a way of bringing us down and getting us down in the dumps, and especially compounded with Satan and in life's issues. We need somebody to encourage us 
to keep us moving. Amen. Huh? Hallelujah. And that and 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 we have that. Huh? We have an, We all have that as part of our anointing huh? to encourage others because the Holy Ghost is the Comforter. Uh, and if you got the Holy Ghost, the same DNA that's in the Holy Ghost is in you uh, to comfort. Amen. Hallelujah. My God in heaven. Now that's, that, that right there needs to be preached. <laughs> uh, we got the comfort. All right. So notice what it says. Uh, remember them that are in bonds as being bound with them and them which suffer adversity, read. As being yourselves also in the body. Now notice, like once again, remember I said he's talking about the saints. Huh? So he's talking about those that are in the body. Huh? And, and he's bringing it to the effect that uh, uh, I'm in my body, right? You're in your body. You feel your pain in your body. Huh? I feel my pain in my body. We ought to feel uh, each other's pain because we're in the body of Christ. Huh? There, uh, I love the scripture that says, there's no temptation that has taken you but notice, such as common to man. Huh? When, I, when I see you going through, I, 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 can, I, I should be able to identify with that. Huh? Huh? When you see me going through, you should be able to identify with that because we all go through. And notice the scriptures in the book of uh, 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 Corinthians, in the uh, first chapter, it talks about we all got uh, 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 a human spirit, uh, and we know uh, uh, each other's humanity because we have a human spirit. Uh, and and we t he takes it a step further. He talks about uh, we all uh, have that spirit, the Holy Ghost. Uh, so we ought to know one another. Uh, and we discern each other through the Spirit. Uh, and, that, and, that, and, the, and the Holy Ghost, my God, the anointing of God, that, that Spirit is closer than, than our own human spirit to God. Amen? Hallelujah. So, so what are you saying? That, 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 that we should be able to feel one another. Huh? 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 Hallelujah. To help one another huh? in, in our adversities. Amen? And, and you know what? I'm just going to say this, put this out there. Uh, that comes literally by taking a moment and stop. Just stop and think. Huh? And, and be able to uh, uh, not stop being busy uh, about, about your own activity and the things that you're doing. And, 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 and think about others. You know, we have to do that uh, uh, literally. It has to be intentional uh, because we can get caught up in our own lifestyles. Uh, and, and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, but when we do that, we miss out on what could be going on with our brother and our sister. Amen? Y'all follow what I'm saying? Thank you, Jesus. So notice what he said. Read that for 13 again. 3 and 13 and 3. Remember them that are in bonds and uh -huh. bound with them. Yes. And them who suffer adversity not, not. as being yourselves also in the body. All right. So he says, remember those that are in jail <laughs> as being bound with them. And he says, remember those that are suffering adversity as you are, are also suffering with them. Amen. Huh? One Lord. Uh, one faith, one baptism, was in all, through all, and in you all. Amen? Uh, all right, read. Marriage is honorable in all. Uh huh. And the bed of the five. Yes. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So, with Paul here, what he was after was they were teaching in, in, at that time that being celibate is is the way to salvation. Uh, being celibate makes you more holy than, than those that are married. Uh, so Paul was setting the, 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 the thing straight, you know, 
that, that, you know, marriage is honorable. God honors marriage. And literally, that doesn't make you uh, more holy. Uh, a, a celibate person isn't more holy than a married person. Amen? Uh, but they were teaching that. Uh, even Paul himself said at one time in, in, in Corinthians, it's better to be celibate uh, than, than to be married. Didn't he teach that? Uh, but but I guess I guess somewhere down the line he had to recant. <laughs> and I think that he said, this is me and not the Lord. <laughs> Speaking that, I should have looked that up. Uh, uh, we got to watch what we teach sometimes. <laughs> we come back to hit you uh, like a boomerang. <laughs> So he was saying marriage is honorable. You know, uh, uh, people can get married huh? and all. Notice he said in the bed, but undefiled. Thank you, Lord. He said, but God will get these people whoremongers huh? and adulterers, people that are having illicit sex, huh? sex without being married. Huh? He said those are the ones uh, God is going to get. Amen. Hallelujah, my God. All right, read. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Uh huh. And be content with such things as you have. Yes. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Now, now, it would seem that Paul is jumping around from one subject to the next. But what he's doing is, he's literally concluding uh, the cha uh, Hebrews uh, <coughs> chapter, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. And he's given the saints some, some, some words of admonition, uh, some words of encouragement, uh, some final summations of the things that he's already taught. Uh, so, so here he says, let your conversation be without what? Covetousness. Covetousness. So, so that word conversation there, it means conduct. Uh, it means conduct. Uh, so he says, let your conduct be without what? Covetousness. covetousness. What is covetousness? Desiring something that doesn't belong. Right. Desiring something that does not belong to you. Amen. That's one of the, the Ten Commandments. That thou shalt not what? Covet. Covet. Amen? So, so is it possible for us to desire the saints of the Most High God something that doesn't belong to us? <laughs> absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And I could just get through speaking in tongues, rolling on the floor, so to speak, and coming out of an anointed service and see something that catches my eye. Uh, uh, and, and if I'm not careful, uh, I can allow that thing to set in my mind and start to covet. Uh, now, the problem with covetousness is that you exalt that thing above God. And covetousness, is the Bible says, is the same as, as witchcraft, or I'm sorry, idolatry. Uh, uh, and we know what idolatry is, don't we? Uh, that's when you put put whatever it is before God. And that's what covetousness equates to. Uh, putting that thing uh, before God. We should put nothing uh, before God. Am I right? Hallelujah. Nothing. And if we were to look at this verse in the book of Deuteronomy, he says don't cover nothing that, 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 that belongs to your neighbor. Uh, his ox, his ass, and, and so forth and so on. Amen? So, so that tells me we generally covet things that, that belongs to other people that are close to us. Uh, we get little jealousy feelings. Uh, and we get uh, desirous. Amen? So we've got to watch ourselves. Amen? And then the scripture tells us to, to mortify. Uh, uh, things that are upon, uh, uh, in our flesh. And, and one of those things that we should mortify that is in our flesh is covetousness. Now, how do we mortify covetousness? To kill. To, kill, to put it to death. Huh? Not, not, not feed into it. Not, not sit back and imagine uh, yourself riding in, in another saint's car. Uh, 
Huh? Living in their house. <laughs> huh? 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 You follow me? Huh? Thank you, Lord. And we've got to watch ourselves. Am I right? Huh? Watch. 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 Because if we don't, things can grow back. Amen? Just because I killed it uh, last week doesn't mean it ain't trying to come back. <laughs> you got to keep slaying stuff. Am I right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Notice. Go over to Ephesians chapter number 5 and verse number 3. What's it say? Read, read, read verse 2, 5 and 2. Yeah, and if I won't, verse 3. And, and walk in love. Oh, there it is, my God. That's what we started out with. As Christ also hath loved us. Oh, didn't we just start out with that? All right, read. And has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. Mm. But fornication and all uncleanness uh -huh. and covetousness, yeah. let it not be once named among you uh -huh. as becoming saints. Now, once again, I'm talking about Paul talking about the saints. Amen? So, so we ought not covet. Amen? Desire things that uh, other saints have. Oh, God, that person. And, and, and want it for ourselves. Uh, and there's an opposite end uh, to this. You can be out shopping with another saint and that saint sees something, a purse, a dress, a suit, uh, a tie, and you buy it. The other saint had one in their hand. They see you buy it, they put theirs back. <laughs> That's a mess. People do that. Saints do that. Huh? <laughs> I don't know what the word for that is, <laughs> but there's a word for that, I'm sure. <laughs> Very. Oh, I want to be different. <laughs> My God. Y'all know people that do that. <laughs> we got to watch. Uh, watch ourselves. You know, I'm going to say this. Uh, 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 I feel the Holy Ghost leading me to say this. We got to watch our motives. You know, check our motives. Why am I doing this? Why am I saying this? You know, why am I going here? You follow what I'm saying? Check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I say this not to throw off, but that that happens a lot with women. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say nothing against women, mm -hmm. but they don't like for you to have the same thing they have. Mm. <laughs> Men I, don't care. If we find a nice pseudo cell, we'll go tell the whole church, all the brothers. Mm -hmm. We have a cell down there. Got some nice suits, you know, you need to go down there and check it out. Mm -hmm. But women, they're different. They don't want yep. you to have the same some person. Some women. Some, yeah, I'm saying, you know, I'm not going to go all But it's more common uh -huh. amongst women to do that than for men. To do. Mm -hmm. I consider it a compliment. Another woman wants something that I have. Mm -hmm. And you know, most, you? People, most women won't tell you where they get their stuff from. I remember one time I asked his sister, I said, Oh, I like that. Where did you get that? My store. <laughs> mm. So, and that let me know she didn't want me to have it. Mm -hmm. But I see, I, I count it as a compliment. Mm -hmm. I think it's nice when someone sees you look nice and they want to look nice. Absolutely. You know, so why not? Absolutely. Yeah. And I've, I've witnessed men do that too. So, yeah. All right. Uh, 
Let's go over to uh, verse, I mean, uh, Colossians 3 and 5. Talking about covetousness. Thank <laughs> you. Got to watch it. Amen? Variance, the spirit of variance. Mortify therefore your members which are. Oh, read, read, I'm sorry, read verse 4. I'm sorry. Verse 4? Yeah. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, uh -huh. then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Yeah. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Now, he's talking about your evil desires. Amen? You've got to put those things to death. Man, I ain't taught that in a long time. Mortify. Uh, set, uh, uh, crucify your flesh. My God. My God. All right. That explains it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, verse 5. What does it say? Mortify, put to death. Therefore, what? Your members which are upon the earth. Yes. Now, here we go. Read. Fornication. Fornication. Put, now, we all have an evil desire in us, if we don't get rid of it, to fornicate. Huh? Got to get rid of that desire. Amen? No sense in uh, saying it ain't there when it's there. Amen? Living in denial. Uncleanliness? What's uncleanliness? Having an unclean spirit. Huh? You know you're unclean when your body's unclean. Your surrounding, the environment in which you live is unclean. You got a potty mouth. Huh? Unclean. <laughs> Amen? Unclean thoughts continue to go through your mind. Yeah? People can't say nothing to you. Uh, you take it to the next level. Uh, uh, follow. We got to fight that stuff off. Uh, mortify that stuff. Go ahead. My daughter just had a foster child and she was only 12 years old, but she had to let her go back because she didn't like the baby. Wow. She No. You know, it's nothing. She thinks she drives herself off with her hands. My goodness. You know, she just, she, she didn't like being, being in the bathtub or in the shower. She just had an unclean spirit. Unclean spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Gotta watch. Thank you. All right. Uncleanliness. Uh, inordinate affection. That's, that's, uh, uh, evil, uh, well, that's, uh, uh, inordinate means to have um, unnatural uh, evil desires. You follow me? Unnatural. Uh, like bestiality. Unnatural. Orgies. Unnatural. Uh, Y'all understand what I'm saying? I ain't got to go no further. Okay. <laughs> All right. Read. Evil concupiscence. Now, now, that's that's even more extreme than inordinate affections. Evil concupiscence. Huh? Uh, that's even more extreme. Uh, that's 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 sadism. Uh, bondage, being chained up, whipped like that, like being beat, hit, make shit. Make sure you know. <laughs> y'all wait till y'all get up here and have to explain stuff. <laughs> I mean, even Apostle Paul spoke of those things. Yes, yes, yes. That was in his life. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I hear people with uh, uh, some ministers, they don't like to go into detail about what it is. They just like to use the word debauchery. You know, so, so then you got to look up the word debauchery to find out. I understand why they use the word. <laughs> you know, but we got we to gotta watch. Amen? Uh, got to watch ourselves. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Some people like sheep. You know, all that kind of stuff. You follow me? 
Hallelujah. Ain't trying to put no ideas in your head. <laughs> All right, read. And covetousness. And covetousness. Now that, that word is covetousness. We got to mortify that. Covetousness. Amen. And notice that. Read. Which is idolatry. Which is what? Idolatry. idolatry. Covetousness is idolatry. Idolatry. Putting, putting that thing before God. Amen. Anything that you put before God, you're going to have some trouble. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Let's go back. What does it say? 13 and 6. No, 13 and 5. Uh -huh. Let your communication, let your conversation be without covetousness. Now, let your lifestyle, that word conversation means conduct, your intercourse, how you deal with other people. When you're dealing with other people, don't desire what they have. See that? When you're dealing with other people, don't desire what they have. All right, read. And be content with such things as you have. Now then, um, conversely, be content with what you have. Huh? They may have uh, uh, three cars. You got one car. Be happy with your one car. Drive it like you got four cars. <laughs> uh, wash it, polish it up. Huh? Be content with that. Huh? Uh, uh, we have some new saints. You know, saints was praying, people was getting these big houses and everything. I said, man, I'm gonna be a big house. Uh, so I'm praying too. Uh, I'm believing God. I even went out and looked for one. And when I didn't get it, I was disappointed. Huh? I wasn't content with what I had, and I had to, that, that thing was a fight in my mind. I said, well, God, how come, what's wrong with me? You know, I'm struggling with God now. I'm fighting with God now. And then God had to sit me down and talk to me and say, look, uh, they got them houses, and uh, uh, they, they got the income to, to support their house. <laughs> you don't have that, right? <laughs> that shut my mouth. Huh? You follow what I'm saying? Got to be content. Go ahead. Bishop, um, so if I get two jobs to help, to help support myself and, slack in, and come slack in one area until I get by, is that just, is you saying the same thing? Absolutely. That's bad. Absolutely. Because... Because look how, look how you phrased the question. And I see your point. Slack. Anytime something causes you to slack up on God, it's not a good thing. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Huh? Yeah. Ooh. See, she was listening. I like that. That's a, that's a you, you told the truth. That's, a, that's another way. That's a, that's a wow. That's idolatry. Am I right? Yeah, beautiful question. Go ahead. <laughs> you were saying that when you got in the church, yeah. everybody was getting these nice homes. Yeah. A lot of times, you don't know what they went through before they got them new homes. Exactly. Uh, they probably suffered. <laughs> yes. You know, after you suffer a while, yes. then God will bless you because yep. you realize you're not there just for the meat. And the, and the yeah. You realize you're there because you love him. Love him. And he will bless you with those things. Yeah. And so you come into the church new. You uh -huh. have to pay the price. You have to pay the price. Yeah, have to pay the price. Yeah. What scripture say? Seek ye first yes. the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and his righteousness and all these other things shall be what? Yeah. Yes. Speak about shot. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Because, see, we can see something. <laughs> yes. And then, like James said, we go after it. We consider, consider, to consume it upon our own lust. Yes. You no, know, it's a certain amount of lust left that motivated you to go after it. Go after it. You're not supposed to have. Right. But God don't want you to have. Don't want you to have. You know, so I see that as being a motivator of lust. Absolutely. Absolutely. And 
And uh, lust is the opposite of love. When This is how you know somebody loves you. When they sacrifice for you. When they want to help you. This is how you know somebody's lusting after you. When they want to please themselves with you. Uh, they, just, they, just, they just want you to serve them. Uh, to satisfy them. Uh, that's love. Amen? Amen? That's how you know the difference. When you give it more than what you receive it. Amen? Bishop, could you break that down? The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. I mean, that's what's in us. That's, that's what's in us. That's the makeup of a you. Yeah. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Yeah. So, how do you break that down to where we can recognize that's what's in us? Well, uh, by the things that we go after. Yeah. Uh -huh. Your eyes your see, eye see it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's the lust of the eye. Yes. Uh, uh, the lust of the flesh is you 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 desire it, mm -hmm. and that pride of life is saying I can get it and get away with it. Yes. <laughs> I can have what I want. Mm. Privilege. <laughs> Privilege. I can get it. And nothing, nothing, nothing's gonna happen to me. Lust is so deceiving, though. Very deceiving. Because you, you go after, you find a way to get it. Right. And you go after it, and then you find out this ain't really what I want. This ain't really what I want. This and that and the other. Ooh. But I think I made a mistake. This ain't what I want. Yes. So lust is very deceiving. Deceiving. Yes. Oh God. You know a story you just reminded me of. David. David had a son that was in love, lusting after his sister, Tamar. And his, his, he let that thing be known unto his friends that he was uh, uh, wanted to, to lay with her. Huh? Wanted to lay with her. And uh, his friends told him, man, you're the, you're the, sons, you're the son of the king. You can have what you want. Uh, pride. Uh, and so they devised a plot, a scheme. He was acting like he was sick. Uh, and, and David went to the house to see him. And, and he said, David, my father, send, send, send my sister and have her make something for me to eat so I can feel better. Uh, and the Bible said David thought that thing was strange. Uh, but he went and did it anyway. Told his daughter, uh, your brother's sick. He's asking you to take him a meal. Uh, so he took the meal. She took the meal to the, to, the, to, the, to the brother. He put all the servants out. And, and he commenced to, to, you know, have his way with her. And she said, oh, brother, don't do this thing. You know, it's, it's, it's wicked. It's evil. Huh? And, 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 and she said, trying to get away with it, she said, just ask dad to give me uh, your hand, uh, my hand in marriage to you. Let's do it and try to do it the right way, knowing that uh, uh, David would never go with that. But she was trying to get out of the situation. But she couldn't. He had his way with it. And afterwards, the Bible said, he, she was despised in his eyes. Kicked her out of the house. She said, well, the thing that you're doing to me now is worse than you did for me in the beginning. Just throwing me out like some commoner. Hmm? His evil desire. We got to watch out for our evil desires because when we get it, it still won't be satisfied. The eyes of a man is never satisfied. And then his brother ended up killing him and became a fugitive. Hated, woo! Yep, hated David too. Ain't that something? My God, there's a lot of lessons in that. Was yeah. he righteous in that? Huh? Was he righteous? Which one? That killed his brother. Nope, not at all. Not at all. 
because of the way he died showed that he wasn't, he didn't do it in a righteous way. Yep, died, died, he died, he had long hair, and he was riding in some, uh, he was trying to kill, take over, he's trying to be the king. <laughs> he's trying to be the king. Uh, take David's spot. Hated David. Take his spot. So, uh, uh, David's soldier killed him. They, his hair got caught in the thicket, and they killed him. Whoop. Go ahead. Uh, Yeah. <laughs> he should have known better. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> he lived out that example. Still did. Vengeance belongs to who? God. Huh? He will what? Repay. Repay. Amen. Wow. But nowadays it belongs to the saints. Yeah, well, um, it, they, that's what I'm trying to get out of. Because it still belongs to God. Yeah. My God. Let brotherly love continue. <laughs> Woo! It's getting deeper than I thought. <laughs> My goodness. Let us examine ourselves. <laughs> All right, read that. Uh, 13 and 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Uh huh. And be content with such things as you have. All right, now be content with what you got. Amen? If you only got one mule, be content. Huh? Uh, with such things that you have. I read. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Now, the reason why God says be content with what you have is because God is the blesser. Huh? He will bless you. He will take care of you. Huh? Am I right? Huh? God, God, God is is a supplier uh, of all your needs uh, if you don't have it that that's just uh because god ain't gave it to you yet uh, don't mean that you can't have it uh you follow me hallelujah my god let's go over uh to to, to matthew chapter number six talking about being content don't cover. Don't be greedy. Amen? Saints can be greedy. Saints can cover. Just because you see me shoot Todd Hob off, that don't mean I ain't overcame everything. I'm still working on some things. Amen? And some things you ain't got the victory over, but you reckon yourself dead. Uh, so you got to spot the warning signs to reckon yourself dead so that you can get the victory. Amen? And the best way to mortify stuff is it, it's, a, it's a process. You can't feed it and you gotta let it die out. Let me say that again. You can't feed it, you gotta let it die out. You follow? that struggle with sexual immorality, pornography, uh, stuff like that. They have a hard time now trying to overcome stuff because every time you look on the TV, yeah? <laughs> every time you go on the Facebook, uh, every time you open up the internet, uh, you see something related to that. Uh, soft porn, uh, half nakedness. <laughs> you follow me? Huh? Walking down the street. <laughs> Walking down the street. You see it? Huh? So, so you got 
gotta, you gotta be super spiritual. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh huh. And you become the righteousness of God. Come on, man. And, 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 yeah. And, and you, you got the life and the nature of God. I mean, are you born after the second time? Yeah. And, 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 and you know what I mean? So you have the power to say no to anything. Yeah. Yeah. No more. You teach it, dude. Thank you, Jesus. You know, and, and God will put you in positions where he would let you know you have complete victory. See it. Yeah. It don't bother you no more. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I'm looking at Granny Face now. She's going to ask you about it later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Okay. All right. Well, but let's, let's move over to... Uh, that scripture that, that I'm trying to connect this to 
is that the Lord will never forsake you nor leave you. Amen. So you don't have to cover. So uh, uh, Matthew chapter number 6, verse 25. What does it say? This is Jesus talking. Therefore I say unto you, uh -huh. take no thought for your life. All right, now you ain't got to think about your own life. What you shall eat uh -huh. or what you shall drink. Uh huh. Nor yet for your body. Yeah. What you shall put on. Yeah. Is not the life more than the meat and uh -huh. the body than raiment? Uh huh. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Uh huh. Are ye not much better than they? Read. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Uh -huh. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not more, much more clothe you, mm -hmm. O ye of little faith? Uh -huh. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye <laughs> first the kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness. Yes. And all these things shall be added unto you. Uh -huh. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For, tomorrow. Yes. for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Amen. So, so that's it. You know, your heavenly father, he knows that you have need of these things. Huh? And you're such much better than the fowls of the air, the birds. He takes care of them. Does he take care of them? Huh? He takes care of, of everything. Why not will he take care of you? Huh? <laughs> Go ahead. Be content. Yes, God got your back. He got your back. Uh, put your chest out. Uh, I feel like standing up now. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Like when it says, it says he know what we need. Yes. Not what we want. Amen. He knows what we need. Yes. And that's more important than anything else. That God is going to give us what we need. Yes. To survive and to be saved. Amen. And, and what the scriptures say, he supplieth all your needs huh? according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. A lot of times uh, what we want yeah. to take us out of the kingdom. That's it. That's that lust. Yeah. That's that evil desire. Mm -hmm. Anything, my God, now I'm giving you deeper revelation. Anything that's taking you away from God fits in that category. Huh? Anything that drives you to God is not of that evil category. And we look at it, Bishop, as a, a man or a woman. Uh huh. It can be anything. It can be cussing. Yep. You like to cuss. Yep. It can be cussing that can take you out of God's will. Absolutely. You, you may cuss in your eye. Yep. You make anything your eye. You make steel in your eye. Yep. But, but, but most of the time, we look at it as just as a man or a woman. Uh huh. Yep. Positions, yeah. uh, 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 pleasures. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Am I right? Yeah. Those things that the, he's giving you, he's giving you an example. The things that the Gentiles seek. Yeah. Huh? Houses, cars, and lands. Uh, positions, wealth, yeah. huh? money. Yeah. Uh, all of that. Hmm? Have to do. It. Yep, evil. But he's telling us be content with what you have. Uh, wait your turn. <laughs> Go ahead. You know, I was thinking too, Bitch. He can get jealous of your skin color. Right. He can get jealous of your hair. Right. He can get jealous of the way you walk. The way yep. you feel. It's, a, it's so much. So much. Out there. Yeah. They got all kind of legs and tails and everything else. Yeah. My God. Just, 
it, it, that's why uh, that's why the Bible that I go back to that scripture. He said, "Be content." Be content. You know, I, I was praying one time when I first got in the church, and I was praying for something, and the Lord let me know, "Be content with be content. what you got." Yeah. You know, I know your need. Yeah. And when the time comes, if it's my will, you're gonna get it. Absolutely. So be content right now with, with what I'm giving you. Absolutely. You know. Ain't that something? Yes. Huh? And, and and you know, to piggyback on uh, what has already been said, you know, you don't know what another person been through. That's true. Huh? Uh, just like uh, I believe Floyd was reminding me of uh, uh, T. Jakes and Kirk Franklin was having that conversation, and and Kirk Franklin was complaining to T. D. Uh, Bishop Jakes, and and and. Uh, Franklin said, oh, man, you don't know what I'm talking, you don't know what it feels like, you know, you don't know what I mean. He said, hold on, wait a minute. Uh, who, you, who you think you're talking to? You know, I've suffered, I've gone through, you know. I didn't just arrive at where I'm at without, without paying the price. You know what I mean? So we, we got to realize that there's a price to be paid. Huh? And be content. Flesh is a mess. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's what we generally say it now. Absolutely. Flesh is a mess. I mean, and it comes from all angles. All angles. And and sometimes, you know, we want to go 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 higher uh, quickly than we should. Huh? We gotta wait on God. Wait on the Lord. Let him, take Let him take you up. Let him seat you at the table. Let the gift that he's given you make room for him. I've been over here 43 years and I've always desired to be rich. Hey! I'm, I'm still not rich. Still not rich. <laughs> I'll hear you, brother. I'll hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. To get a, a better relationship with God. Yeah. And the person decided, well, you know, in other words, I've tried my way and it's not working, so I guess I will do what I should do, but I know it's right to do. So the person began to uh, do what was right and, and, and some of the things we had talked about. And they talked to me later. They said, you know, said, the Lord is blessing me already, and I didn't do everything that yeah. the Lord was supposed to do. I said, but did you have a heart change? Thank you. He said, yeah, my intention is to do it, but I just don't have the finances right now. I said, God's looking at your intentions. Yeah. So he's looking at the heart. That's where the blessing is coming from, the heart. Yeah. So God's not looking at what you got. He's looking at what you intend to do. And I told the person, I said, now, what you intend to do, what's in your mind to do, I said, you do that. Do that. I said, you do that so your blessing will flow even more. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's so good counsel. God looks at the intent of the heart when we, when good we want to do something. It don't necessarily mean we have the victory right now. Uh huh. But if we keep struggling, if we keep fighting, if we keep, you know, going after God with everything that we have in us and the ability that we have, God will bless us. He will and bless us. We have the victory. Yes. He will bless us. He'll bless you. Amen. God will bless. He yes. wants to bless us. Yes. We have to, uh, I don't know if we do this or not, but we can't look at God as the enemy standing in my way. Uh, God wants to help us. Amen? God is for us. Uh, and if God be for us, who then can be against us? Amen? We need God. Uh, every day. Best thing that has happened to us. Amen? All right, read. Where we at? Ripper? Let's go back to Hebrews. Verse 6. Uh huh. So that you may boldly say. Now, now, now. That's why God wants to help you. He said, then, so we can boldly say. The Lord is my help. Uh huh. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Yes. So, so let's go to Psalms 37. In verse 25. Kind of let the Bible teach us tonight. 
This is coming from David. And, and, and 30, 3725, I'm sorry. Yep. This is, this is coming from David. This is his testimony. I have been young. All right, David said, I've been young. Now I'm old. But now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken. Uh huh. Nor his seed begging for him. Hallelujah. Now that's a testimony. That's a true testimony. Amen. God will never forsake the righteous. God will never allow his seed to beg bread. Meaning that he supply you with some bread. You follow me? Thank you. God has things set up where even if you ain't got a job, you can still go get something to eat. Come on now. <laughs> huh? Hallelujah. God has made ways uh, to take care of his people. Am I right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So you don't have to worry about it. God will make sure you have what you need. I'm sure everybody here got more clothes than what they need. Huh? Shoes than what they need. Huh? What I mean by what I mean by what you need that you got more than one pair. Huh? 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 God, God supplies. I'm sure if you go to your cupboard, huh? You you got at least a can of soup. At least, huh? God supplies. Amen? Go ahead. <laughs> Absolutely. Meaning we have things. We have it. You know, if we, if we just take a look around us and yes. see the homeless and see people sleeping in bus stops, we got more than enough. More than enough. God supplies. He makes ways. He opens doors. Am I right? And especially for his righteous. Especially for those that call on his name. Amen? We got to view it like this. That we're in God's kingdom. Right? And God is the king. Am I right? The way that people know that there is a wealthy king is by how his subjects are being treated. About, about how they are being supplied for. You follow me? When, when the Queen of Sheba went to go see Solomon uh, and saw how prosperous he was, she declared he was the wisest king that she had ever met. Uh, who was in control of Solomon? Who was blessing Solomon? God. Huh? You follow me? The half hasn't even been told. Huh? You follow me? So, so catch the principle. You're connected to the, you're a king's kid. You're in the kingdom of God. Huh? And, and God is not going to allow you to go slack because that reflects on him. That shows his inability. That shows his shame. Think about you and your own children. Huh? You would sacrifice for your own children huh? so that they can have a good parent. Huh? Huh? Sacrifice for them. God sacrificed for us huh? so that we can have, so that we can be blessed. Huh? Huh? Why? Because he wants your light to shine. Uh, before men, that they may see your good works and glorify him. You're a reflection of him and his kingdom. <laughs> That's a strong principle if you catch it. Uh, then you know that you shall never lack uh, because he never lacks. Uh, uh, go ahead. Yes! Now we're not going to no junk, we're going to nice cars. Yes! God has supplies. 
supply. He's going to some nice homes. Yeah. God has supply. He supply. God has supply to all of us. All of us. We got our right mind. Huh? He supply. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, David, so confident in God, he said, even if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> huh? Hallelujah. Thank you. You're a king's kid. You belong to him. You're in his kingdom. Huh? Hallelujah. And every king wants to, his, his subjects to prosper. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. So you ain't got to worry about stuff. Huh? Don't worry about your next meal. Huh? Your life is more than that. Huh? Don't worry about where your next uh, clothes going to come from. Huh? Don't worry about that. Huh? God will bless you. Huh? God will cause other people to bless you. Huh? You ain't got to worry about that. Huh? Just stay focused. Huh? Glorify him. Magnify him. Serve him. Huh? Worship him. Huh? Walk with him. Huh? Let brotherly love continue. Huh? Hallelujah. That's all you got to do. He will supply. He'll take care of you. Huh? Hallelujah. I can tell you, let me tell you, I can only remember one time the, 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 the light man came to our house and turned off our lights because I, I forgot to pay the bill. I didn't, I, it wasn't like I didn't have the money. Uh, and then when I realized what he was doing, uh, I said, hey, hey, hold on. Uh, and he said, well, just give me the money. I gave him the money, left the lights on. I said, thank you, God. Uh, <laughs> Uh huh. I really turned my lights out and I didn't have them. Uh huh. Thank <laughs> God made a way to get them back. He made a way. Won't he make a way? Huh? Thank you. Amen. Things happen. Huh? No things happen. Life happens. Huh? Huh? Sometimes. You know, things legitimately happen and you don't have the money. But God will make a way. Huh? He'll touch somebody hard. Huh? He'll open up a door. He'll create a new program just for you. <laughs> Come on here, somebody. Huh? To meet your needs. God will do it. Huh? Do y'all believe that? I'm sure. <laughs> so you don't have to worry. Worry is of the devil. Huh? That's not of God. Do y'all believe that? Worriness has all kind of implications. Anxiety. Huh? Effects with your internal organs. Your mind. Your sleep. Your eating habits. Your blood pressure. Everything. Huh? That's not of God. Am I right? He said, be anxious for what? Nothing. But with prayer and supplication, make your what? Request known, Request known unto who? God. God. Yeah. We close Bible class now. <laughs> All right. Where we at? Go ahead. Um, um, I was told, because I needed a cochlear implant, um, a person said, you got a deaf, dumb spirit in you. <laughs> I said, and, and I, had to, I had to listen to what that person said, but I, had, but I didn't take that in. Right. And God, <laughs> yet God, was, God was still right there with me. Yes. There's some things I can't, I can't hear or comprehend right. in certain environments. Right. But God is still right there and supplying my needs. Absolutely. You know, and... Um, and, and that's, that's, God, that's God working on my, on my faith. 
Absolutely. So when that person told me I got a sister I'm hard of hearing, I got a deaf dumb spirit. Right. And, and uh, but also I didn't know how to correct that person I'm sorry. like the way I want to correct that person with the word of God. Here we so go. I just left it alone and, and then sat back and watch how God was working with me. Well, you say Satan the Lord rebuke you. That's how you correct that. Satan the Lord rebuke you. Because 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 you don't have a deaf dumb spirit. Hey man, you got a medical condition, uh, and and God has given people wisdom and knowledge and understanding uh, to help with that condition. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's the enemy. Uh, to come, notice, notice. God uses people to encourage us. The devil uses people to discourage us. You got to know the difference between the two. Amen? Am I right? Amen. Amen. This is good Bible college. Good Bible study. Amen? Practical living. All right, what verse we in? We about done? Uh-huh. Remember them which have the rule over you, uh -huh. who have spoken unto you the word of God, mm -hmm. whose faith follows, considering the end of their conversation. Now notice, Paul is talking about Religious leaders, the, your pastors, your elders, your, your, your ones that are over you in, in auxiliary. He's not talking about uh, people that may be over you on your job that ain't Christian, that ain't, that ain't holy. Huh? He's not talking about uh, governmental officials here. Listen, listen to how it sounds. Remember them which have the rule over you who have spoken unto you the word of God, that have pre preached unto you, that have taught unto you. Amen? Hallelujah. Now notice, whose faith what? Follow. Now, whose faith follow, that are literally living what they're preaching or teaching. Am I right? Now notice then. Read that last connection. <laughs> Now, uh, when he says considering the end of their conversation, he's not talking about the end of their words. He's literally here talking about the end of their life. Follow? Now, you probably know some preachers that preach well, taught well, but in the end, they, they, they died a horrible life, a death. Huh? It's like you see these athletes uh, make a ton of money, huh? But but in the end they die broke, no money. <laughs> we shake our head, don't we? Same way with when he said, you know, uh, watch out for those that are saying things to you but are not living it. Follow? Now, conversely, you got some that are, are great examples, and they're living it, and they, they, they go out a glorious, a glorious home going. Hmm? I'm going to be honest. <laughs> when, I, when the Lord was feeding me this, I thought about Bishop Asa Jones. And I have never seen a, 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 a homegoing service like that. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, uh, I ain't never seen one like that. It was different. Uh, and, you know, things that were done in it. You know, uh, even, even how they had them uh, going this way. At first I said, that's all. But then the Lord uh, uh, taught me. He said, when... Uh, a, a bishop passes, you know, you don't lay him this way, huh? you lay him this way, like he was laid. I'm like, look at here. Huh? <laughs> that, that stuff excites me. I don't know about that. That's not, it just excites me. Huh? <laughs> I'm like, wow. Okay. Yeah, I ain't no sitting on that way. I didn't know it on that way. Lord, open up my understanding. I'm like, wow. 
God, 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 God wants us to even be glorious in death. <laughs> What's the scripture say? Precious in the sight of the Lord. And what? How's it go? Yeah, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. Amen. That's precious in the sight of God. <laughs> Amen. Oh, All right, read. Verse eight. Uh -huh. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Now, now he's just. He's just now giving you another foundation by which to stand. And we'll close on this point. That, that all that he said in the beginning from verse number one is hinging on this foundation in verse number eight. Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever. All of God's word is settled. Huh? Everything uh, that, that, that we have said on tonight to you uh, concerning the Lord and his promises and what he's able to do is settled. Amen? Uh, you ain't got to wonder about it. Uh, you ain't got to question about it. Uh, you ain't got to uh, 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 worry about the fact that God will supply all your needs. Uh, that God is able to build you up. Uh, that God is able to bless you exceedingly. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you. So don't let nobody try to persuade you differently. No, no man, no woman, no boy or girl, or no spirit. Not even yourself. Amen? All right, give God a praise. Thank you, Lord. We thank God. I thank God. Amen. Amen. We'll take up our offering. Those that are watching virtually, you have opportunity to give on tithing. Amen. Look up Christian Ministries and give on tithing. In Jesus' name.